Hi guys, so as the exams approach, I thought I would do a video on exam tips. So I've made 35 exam tips. Hopefully this will be useful for you. Um, I've divided it into a before, during and after the exam. And yeah, before I start, good luck to everybody. I hope these exams go well. So number one, get a good night's sleep. That is obviously very, very, very important because your, your brain needs rest. It needs to recover. And in order to be functioning at 100%, which you need to be doing on the day, you need a good night's sleep. Do not stay up all night for sure, or even late trying to cram or study the, the last bit, um, the last topic. It's not worth it, right? So get a good night's sleep. Eat breakfast, stay hydrated, obviously. Don't eat something that you've never eaten before. Stick with your normal breakfast. Stop drinking one hour before the exam. That is to, so you don't, at least one hour, so you don't have to go to the toilet in the middle of the exam. Three, know your exam timetable. You should have this. You should know it. You should make sure you know exactly when you need to be in school. That's um, obviously a given. Four, arrive at school plenty of time before the exam. Don't rock up two minutes before the exam in a panic get there up to an hour before um just so you're um well there could you there could be traffic or anything so just to make sure you're there five come prepared bring a dark blue or black pen and a pencil so you have to write in dark blue and black pen and a pencil for graphs and diagrams bring two of each Cases they stop working. Sharpener, ruler, eraser, no correcting flu fluid. Your calculator, arguably the most important thing not to forget. And charged. This is obviously not for analysis paper one where you're not allowed a calculator. Some people bring two calculators just in case the first one doesn't doesn't work. Um you can bring all in a transparent bag or no bag at all, but you can't put them in like um your normal pencil case or whatever. Six, no personal belongings, leave outside the exam hall. Do not bring your phone into the exam hall. You can get in serious trouble um, if you do. Be familiar with the formula booklet, right guys? This is, bef remember, these are all before the exam. You should know the formula booklet. You should know how it's set up. You should know where, where the different formulae are that you need. If not, do it, do it right now. Like if I say to you, where is the formula for the gradient of a line between two points? Don't, you don't want to waste time trying to find that. You need to know exactly where everything is. Be familiar with the exam instructions. That's the, what's the instructions on the front page of the exam. They will, uh, you will get a chance to read them in the exam, but know them before the exam because they're always the same. Um, they're, they are on, and that's my point 10, the specimen papers. So make sure you have the specimen papers and read the exam instructions on them before, before the day. Of the exam be familiar with the paper layout right so there's paper one paper two paper three for hl and there's analysis and applications so there's a lot of different exams and there's different layouts like for example analysis has section a and section b which are short questions and long questions applications paper one ha is just short questions paper two is uh, long questions paper one for analysis no calculator Paper one and two for applications. Yes, you're allowed calculator. Paper three, and um, for HL, it is two long questions. And this is the um, if you're sitting your exam um, in 2021, this is a new this is the new type of question. They are long questions that are focused on problem solving. So make sure you know exactly which uh, you know the layout of the paper. And where you're supposed to write your answers? Are you supposed to write it on the on the question paper or on a separate um, paper booklet? Make sure you have read the specimen papers. Now, you should have done the specimen papers for sure. I mean, we talk about doing past papers. You should definitely have done the specimen papers, but you should have gone through them and make sure that you understand how um, how many questions there are, how it's laid out, etc., etc. This is a big one. Make sure you know how to change your C your GDC, your calculator from degrees to radians and vice versa. Unless we're talking about applications, um, standard level for all the others, you need 
uh, to be able to work in degrees and radians. But even application standard level, sometimes your calculator for some reason is in radians. You need to know to make sure how to put it in degrees. In fact, I've seen it before where the teachers put it into test mode and when they put your calculator into test mode, it turns it into radians. Now, if you're doing a uh, question that's in degrees and your calculator is in radians, you'll get the whole thing wrong. So be very, very, very careful. Okay, during the exam, read the exam instructions carefully, but know them before. So I've already said know these exam instructions, but um, you will be given a chance to read the instructions. Use the reading time. So you get five minutes of reading time that's not included in the exam time to read the exam. You're not allowed to uh, write or type anything to your, in your calculator during this time, but use it to make a plan. Read the questions and make a plan. Which question are you going to do first? Which questions do you like? Um, which questions do you not like? Etc. 14. Read the questions carefully. Obviously, this is very, very important. Be careful. What are they asking? Um, don't just read it very quickly and then go straight into the question and get it wrong. 15. Don't freak out if you can't do a question or questions. Expect it, right? I always tell students, expect there to be at least one really, really difficult question that you've never seen before. There's nothing like anything in the past papers. It happens all the time. Even I, when I get a new exam, there's a question on it that I struggle with and I need time to to figure it out. So yeah, not only should you not freak out, expect it, this is going to happen. So um, yeah, you should be at ease when it does happen because it's going to happen. Do the questions you find easiest first. I think that's one of the most important tips on this whole list. Do the questions you find easiest first, the questions you can do that it gets you in a good mood, gets your confidence up and gets marks in the bag. Leave the questions that, that are really difficult, the questions you can't do, to the end, especially because if you run out of time, there's no problem running out of time when there's questions that you can't do anyway. But if you run out of time and there's a question on the paper that you could have done, that um, that is not acceptable. I, I do not like when my students tell me that when they say, oh, I, I could have done this question, but I ran out of, I spent too much time on this other question. Well, don't do don't do that other question then, do the one you can do. And that kind of relates to point 17. If you get stuck on a question, move on. So if you can't do it, or if you, if you think you can do it and you're stuck, no problem, move on, do the next question and you can come back to it. Write clearly, obviously, some people have a big problem writing clearly, but in an exam, put a little bit more effort, make sure the examiner can read what you're doing. Nothing annoys an examiner more than not being able to read writing. And if it comes to, if an examiner is marking it and, and they're thinking, well, will I give them the mark or not? And some of them are, sl sometimes it's slightly subjective whether you should give a student a mark for a particular piece of working. If you can barely read it, the examiner is probably gonna go, well, no. But if it's really nice and clear, they might say yes. Point 19, show your working. You've been told this since you were like five years old. Make sure you show all your working, you get marks for it. If you get an answer, if you just write down the answer and it's wrong even by a tiny bit, like one decimal place, you get zero marks. But if you show your working, um, if you show you're working, you could even get full marks. 20, right? Rounding is a big one in the IB, right? First, firstly, don't round in the middle of a question. Well, when I say don't round, I mean don't round to three significant figures. Put put plenty of sign plenty of significant figures in the middle of the question, like your full calculator display, or at least six. Um, for your answer then, so the answer, final answer, I have a question. Put down the full calculator display, or at least six significant figures, and then underneath it, round it to three significant figures. That's what I always do, because even if you mess up th this rounding at the end, you'll probably get the full marks anyway. And then finally, if using an answer from a previous part, so if you're in part B and it says use your answer for part A, use the unrounded answer, this one, the six significance figure answer, not the three significance figure figures answer. Okay, 21, don't make silly mistakes, obviously, or at least minimize them by taking care instead of rushing through a question. So how often does it happen that you just rush through a question and you make a silly mistake and you lose a load of marks? Don't do that, take your time. You actually, you actually do have 
plenty of time to do this exam. So um, yeah, take your time, make sure you are not making silly, silly mistakes. 22, time management is crucial. Be aware of how much time is left and how many marks you have left. Think a mark a minute. So it's not exactly a mark a minute. It's a little bit more. There's more than one minute per mark, but it's close enough. So think a mark a minute. So for example, if you have um, 30 minutes left and there's 50 marks still on the paper, then you've gone, your time management has not been good. So don't get to that stage. If you, if there's 30, if there's 30, marks left there should be about 30 minutes left so just kind of always keep that in mind um 23 remember you have a gdc unless you're in analysis paper one and it is very very powerful i actually have a I have a little saying for analysis kids it's don't know what to do is it paper two and obviously the amount of time students I have students who are just totally lost like how do how can I possibly do this question and I'm saying it's simple just put it into the GDC press a button and then you get your answer remember your GDC can solve pretty much any equation um, 24 remember you have a formula booklet yeah look that's the formula booklet and your GDC they're your two best friends in an exam they're the two things you have all the time 25 be aware of how many marks are available in each question, right? That's very, very, very important. If it's a seven mark question, it requires a lot of working. And look, it says here, this, this gives an indication of how many steps are required, not how difficult the question is. So you might have a seven mark question that's really easy and a seven mark question that's really difficult. It's not about how difficult it is, it's about how many steps are required when you're showing your solution. Always, always, always know. Be aware when you're doing a question. I've seen students for a one mark question do loads and loads of working out. That's a big um, no no. 26. Read the command terms and know what. And know. And know the what. Damn it. Typo. And know what is expected for each example. Write down is usually worth one mark. And working is not required. So if it says write down this, it's just the answer's there. You don't have to show any working. Show that requires you to clearly show all your working um, and to get to an answer or whatever. 27. If you need an answer from part A to do part B, make sure you get one. Now, what I mean by that is imagine part B says, using your answer from part A, do this, blah, blah, blah. But you couldn't do part A. Well, do something in part A, just make up some some numbers or writing or whatever so that you get an answer from part a and hopefully one that makes some bit of sense and you can say answer to part a is this and then you can use that answer in part b um as i say try to make sure it make it make sure that it makes sense in context 28 questions get more difficult as the paper goes on so some some students don't actually know this but yeah, as the paper goes on, they, they start easy and they get progressively more difficult. Now, in analysis, that's true in section A. The last, the first question in section A is, easy, is supposed to be easy. The last question in section A is supposed to be difficult. And then it goes back in section B. So the first question in section B is, is easy. And the last question in section B is difficult. But generally, it gets more difficult as the paper goes on. Um, I did say in the reading time, choose the questions, the easiest questions first. But remember, you might prefer question five to question one because that's something you studied or, or whatever. Um, 30. Stay until the end of the exam. I see so many students leave early all the time. What happens is, and this is actually a big issue for students, what happens is you end up by the end of it, after like an hour and 10 minutes or something, you stop caring. You're just so tired of it. Um, and this happens um, throughout the whole exam session as well. You stop caring. And that's a problem. And then you just say, oh, look, I just want to get out of here. But you're better off, obviously, to stay. Maybe try and find a few more marks. And then, I've said this is also a test of endurance. And then... 31, go over all your questions at the end. So if you have time, you shouldn't be leaving early. You should be going over all the questions. Do the whole exam again. I don't see a reason why anyone should be leaving an exam early. The only exception I say I allow someone to leave early is if they've got 100%. So if you can come out and say, I've, I know 
I know, Mr. Flynn, I got 100%. I'm leaving early. I'll say fine, but you better get the 100%. And let's be fair, that is not um, likely. Not many people get 100%. 32, check that your answers make sense in context. So that just means if the answer says, or if, sorry, if the question says, um, how fast was Paul running? And you say 6,000 kilometers per hour. You're probably wrong, so just be careful. And, and a lot of diagrams, they say, uh, diagram not to scale, but you can still tell if you've got some create if if all the sides are in the single digits and your sides in the well, well, I've got three digits or something. Again, you're probably wrong. Okay, finally, I know I'm flying through these guys, but um, obviously you can just read them. Finally, after the exam, don't worry about what other people are saying. People will say all sorts of things. Um, and certainly don't worry about answers. If someone comes up to you and says, oh, did you get three for question one? And someone else says, yeah, I got three and, and you ended up and you got five. Who knows? Don't even don't even worry about it. This is number 34 is a big, big, big one, right? Always the paper one is in the afternoon and paper two is the next morning, right? So that evening is the best time for you in fact it's the only time for you really to make predictions about what's going to be in in uh, in the paper so what you what you do if you can make a list if you can remember make a list of all the questions that came up and then write down all the topics that came up and there's no hard and fast rule here that if a topic came up it won't come up in paper two it might come up in paper two but the topics that didn't come up in paper one almost certainly will come up in paper two. So they don't necessarily test every single topic, but they do try their best. So yeah, just bear that in mind. If for example, I don't know, um, there was no quadratics in paper one, you're probably gonna get something to do with quadratics in paper two. So if you can make a list of everything that came up and you can prepare for paper two that way. Finally, don't stress if paper one doesn't go well, or even if paper two and three don't go well, um, it is only a test at the end of the day. But specifically, if paper one doesn't go well, remember you have paper two and three for HL and your IA, so it's not all over. Okay, hopefully guys, that is helpful to someone. Please share this video with um, anyone who you think might like it. Uh, like the video, subscribe, um, and good luck in your exams, guys. Hope everything goes well.